All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for joining in on the Age of Success podcast. I'm Michael Martinez, the founder and owner of this brand organization. Thank you guys for joining. And today we have our speaker, Mark Hogan, outside LV for Concordia University. Mark, how are you doing? Good, Michael. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Thank you very much. I know we've been friends for a long time and we, oh, yeah. it would just be a good um, idea to have you on here. So, um, do you want to talk to us a little bit about your beginning here, about your beginning in sports? Because that's what we're going to be talking about over this podcast. Sports, mentality, pursuing your endeavors, and getting structure inside someone's life to pursue the, the goals. Yeah, absolutely. So growing up, uh, I'll start with like the fitness aspect of it. So growing up, I, I was fortunate enough to have like a weight room in my house. So I would go in there every once in a while just to like move around. My dad's a chiropractor, so he knows a little bit about fitness and wellness and that stuff. So yeah, I started working out when I was about 12 or 13. And then and as I progressed, my dad started taking me to the Alaska Club, the gym we have there in town. And he started training me there as well. And then once I started getting into high school and stuff, I started playing football. So, and the team had a really good strength and conditioning program. So that kind of progressed me as well through fitness and getting stronger and everything like that in high school. And then now I'm in college. So now we have an even more advanced training program. So now it's like structured into periodization. So it's in like three, three periods. So the first one is like kind of getting the joints moving, just getting like the synovial fluid going and stuff like that. And then the second is more of controlling. So like slow on the way down, I'll slow on the way up and stuff like that. And then the last period is power. So you just move as much as possible trying to stretch the, stretch the muscles. All right. Wow. Yeah, that's definitely a journey there. And it definitely gives you a lot of experience to talk about. So for someone who's just beginning weightlifting or someone who's just trying to get into their, uh, I guess you could say, pursuing their New Year's resolution goals, how are the goals different between, I guess, high school lifting or your first general idea of lifting it's probably just maybe some shoulders some chest work and then maybe breaking it up into maybe press days leg days push days and and then specific goals maybe like prs or um certain weights within certain times yeah i think it's really important to have goals because otherwise you don't really know where you're going so when you're first starting out i think first of all it's good not to compare yourself with other people because like going to the gym for the first time it might be kind of like intimidating to see like all the big guys lifting in there and you're like dang (laughs) i want to get to there but but yeah don't compare yourself to other people just set your own goals like some people might have goals like maybe to just go to the gym and run a mile like that could be a goal for somebody to do that consistently and then as you progress like you can have more goals as you move into like weight training and stuff in that fit, fitness aspect, you could have like increasing your bench press or increasing your squat, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, wow. Um, and do you mind sharing an experience that maybe others can relate to about you trying to pursue something maybe in the beginning? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So once my dad first started taking me to the gym, like I really loved the bench press, so I'll share an example for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I remember I bench pressed 185 pounds on a bench press. And I looked over and I saw this guy benching like 225, which is 240 pounds, 45 plates on each side. I'm like, dang, I want to get up to that. So I stayed consistent with it. I kept that goal in my mind every time I went to the gym. Like I want to bench that much weight. And then I kept progressing every week and I eventually worked up to it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think once you reach that and i think that's the best thing in the world sometimes even oh, yeah. if it's just you celebrating in that moment it's like sometimes you want to just take a break or I, I, you just stop and look at the weight it's like wow i did exactly. that <laughs> like once you achieve a goal like you just want to achieve more goals yeah that's yeah for sure about it definitely and for going towards these i guess uh yeah people have yeah goals or ideas of improving themselves what would you say to someone who's just i guess who's trying to take back a hold of their life 
let's see, maybe like, do you go somewhere to think about stuff or do you kind of step back sometimes from what you're doing to think about how you're progressing or? Yeah, I think fitness translates to life. Like when you set goals in the weight room, like that translates to life. You can set goals in life too. Like in the classroom, like if you want a certain GPA, then you can set a goal, hey, I want to get a 4.0 next semester. And like you put the same work you put into the weight room, into the classroom, you'll eventually get there to that goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. And maybe, um, maybe you'd like to talk about an experience that you experienced recently where sometimes it's challenging going through a process to actually attain your goals. So maybe a setback yeah. or something or something that kind of put you down for a little bit, but then overcoming it. Definitely. I know my freshman year in college, it was kind of tough because, you know, in high school, you're the top dog and then you go to the, the college and everybody else is better than you faster than you're stronger than you. And you kind of have to restart because you're a freshman. You got to work your way up. So my freshman year in college, it was kind of tough because I felt like everybody there had their own clique, you know, and I was trying to fit in with somebody like with the team or whatever. And like sitting on the bench freshman year, it was kind of tough. But I feel like going through stuff like that, like it kind of sets you up for the rest of your life. Like you got to look for the bigger picture because it might like, be for something down the road that you might go through. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think it definitely prepares you for the future in that aspect. And I liked how you started to mention um, groups and having friends. What is it do you see that um, I guess is pretty similar or common between people who are um, pursuing their constant um, ideas that come through their mind and that are on the pathway that are that's probably similar to yours? Yeah, I think a lot of people that have strong mindsets, they they have really defined goals. Like I, I'm talking about goals a lot. But I think it's really important to have goals and like actually know where you're going because if you don't have goals and you're just going without a direction I guess so yeah a lot of people in the fitness like area they're very structured their lives are structured like something I started to do during quarantine actually was I made like a schedule for my week because uh, like quarantine like you didn't really know like what you're going to do every day because your schedule is all jumbled up so I made a schedule for my week and I made like a routine for myself so I wrote it in my notes on my phone like I'll get up at 6 a.m work out eat breakfast and then start my online classes for the day so I already got the workout done in the morning and then I have the rest of the day to do other work school work and stuff like that yeah definitely wow I think that's a good structured routine that you have going on there um yeah yeah I think it definitely pushes you and also makes things a lot easier also to do just having that uh, oh yeah that structured mindset yeah. So you were mentioning about this quarantine. So how else do you recommend people to maybe stay active or to stay um, pursuing maybe a pathway that they have had in mind, even though that I, I, I know a lot has, has gone on through this uh, quarantine here is oh, getting yeah. to us, uh, I guess, mentally here. And it's not the same doing a home workouts versus being in, being in a gym. So, right. Yeah, yeah. I think like the mindset is similar. You still have to progress like your weights and everything. You got to do like better than you did the previous day. And what I did is what I had a backpack and I did push ups with my backpack. So I think like just finding creative way, creative ways to work out if you don't have access to like a bench press or a squat rack or a treadmill or something like that. So go on runs, push ups, pull ups. Find something to do pull ups on. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah just get creative with it i guess yeah 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 definitely and um i i also want to talk about maybe some of your social media platforms that you have going on here because i've definitely seen you grow oh. from back in high school oh, yeah. all the videos all the pictures they were kind of stagnant at first but now they're coming out in like i guess planned times it seems like and they're, they're much more informative too. it's like wow i didn't know that or like wow i should probably look into that a little bit more Right. Yeah, I've been trying to have like a set schedule with like posting and everything and trying to get like 
content with substance other than just like a video of me working out or something like that to like teach people maybe it'll get someone like motivation to work out or go to the gym or something like that and teach them how to work out like i posted a couple of videos of quarantine workouts yeah yeah so yeah. Gave, gave some people some ideas to get some gains while they're in the house <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. We're all about we're all about those games, man. Oh yeah. And, um, what goes into finding some of the information that you have on there? Because I know you have stuff about nutrition on there, some muscle, maybe some um, healing or warm ups. Also, I also like that you mentioned warm ups because a lot of guys, I know a lot of guys don't actually warm up or stretch properly. Oh, yeah. They lift. So, so what goes behind finding those uh, detailed pieces of information? So right now, I'm actually studying exercise science in school. That's my major. Yeah. So a lot of that is coming from classes that I take. I've taken a nutrition class last semester, wow. exercise physiology, uh, kinesiology, all that good stuff. And right now I'm actually studying to get my personal training certification. Yeah. So I'm kind of taking some of that information and sharing it because I feel like getting the information and actually teaching it to other people, like I'll learn it like a lot better and it'll help other people. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I think I'm about to sign up or subscribe or something. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> information is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I think when you provide that information and also like the sources as well, that's uh, pretty well structured, it makes it more um, appealing to someone and also makes them, I guess, have that, that trust between themselves as a person who doesn't know to the person who's like their coach or teacher, per se. Um, right. Cause there's a lot of like gym bros out there that, that, <laughs> like spread false information so you got to be careful where you get your information from yeah, and i try yeah. to keep my content like on my social media pages like backed by research i think that's really important yeah yeah and um what goes into making some of those i guess fun because i know it, it's easy to put out bland information or information that's just maybe just you working out and then a couple comments but how do you make it fun? Like I've seen you on TikTok and then get, getting some of those uh, creative aspects out there. Yeah, I think uh, making it fun, it gets more people's attention, I guess. So they're more intrigued of seeing the content and learning from it. Yeah. And I found like TikTok was a really good like area to do that more like fun content other than just like bland information. So I think just like getting your creative mind flowing and figure out like what people will want to watch and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Dang. Yeah. It's, it's been pretty cool. What, like watching you do all that. Yeah. Wow. I wish I had, a, <laughs> I wish I had the time. I could probably be doing that too. Um, yeah. So we were talking about maybe ideas or finding information, some classes also, but how about mentors? Where have you seen, um, I guess, mentors come along in your path, whether it be a student or an athlete or even a collegiate athlete, or maybe in this area of social media and um, um, being an influencer? Do you want to talk about um, that? I think a lot of my mentors growing up, I think they've come from sports, definitely. But I think other than like players, I think they came from coaches. So like in, during college, I've had – three different coaches on my football team and they've all had like different ideas of motivation. So I think like having those three football coaches, like one, our football coach now, he has a very good like family aspect of everything. Yeah. So yeah. his motto is TOI. So it's team over individual. So I think that's really important to think about in a non, um, like the middle coach, coach, he his mentality was just, just keep digging. So like I think that's really important to think about. If you're going through tough tough times, just keep going, keep pursuing like your dreams, and like not to give up. And then our first football coach, he had this quote that stuck with me for a long time. It was, "Stay loyal to what you said you were going to do long after the feeling you set it in has left you." Yeah. So I think that's really good as well like like if you say you're going to do something and when you're in like a really good mood like you feel like you're going to do it in the future but like when tomorrow comes you're kind of feeling tired you're sleeping in it's like do I really want to do this but like you got to stay loyal to like what you said you're going to do even though like the feeling you said it in is lefty so you still got to do what you got to do 
Yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, I've had a lot of good like football coaches as mentors, like as I progress through life. I feel like. Yeah, that's great. Wow. Uh, yeah, I think definitely having a mentor definitely provides that um that future that future foresight, especially in either character development or um, getting through challenges here or getting a different mindset to help you um, get forward and go through things, especially. Let's see. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um. Well, what's it like, um, I guess, uh, going from um lifting in an actual gym versus the quarantine workouts yeah i think like you can still get like the muscle pumps and everything like you're going for more reps i guess yeah rather than strength yeah so i feel like i've lost a lot of strength i haven't touched like weights in a long time because i haven't had access to a gym so i'm curious to see how much strength i've lost next time i get into a gym because i've just been doing like push-ups with a backpack on filling it with books i don't really know how much that weighs but <laughs> trying to do that and then pull ups with a backpack and exercise bands that's all i really got <laughs> yeah yeah i feel it because i i know it's probably different for like for everyone people who just maybe run at the gym versus people who are there like almost every day versus athletes who are um so used to it from like probably a, a young age mm -hmm. and now it's it's like how long has it been like a month, two months, almost, almost three months. Yeah, it feels like I was quarantine in Wisconsin for like nine weeks, I think. So oh. it's going on 10, 10, 11 months, I think. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's definitely put on, um, I guess, a different aspect of uh, of how to keep going with things. A, a definite, um, a quick way to change and kind of overcome, um like like what we're doing um so do you do anything like um like besides lifting let's talk about maybe watching videos like what kind of videos do you watch or do you read any other content or how do you view other people's content and kind of getting that um that self-education besides school how important right i think uh youtube and instagram are really good sources but you got to be careful like where you get the sources like i talked about earlier yeah like, there's a lot of guys out there that uh like don't really know what they're talking about what they think they do so they're spreading like false information so you just got to be careful where you get the information so i try to like find credible sources that are backed by research so i get my information from and i compare it to what i learned in school to see if it like lines up yeah yeah definitely and um yeah I, I think i think i think that's a good idea for people to do especially during these times either be reading or pursuing something like you, you are going for your um cpt certified personal trainer yeah. Yep. and um yeah it's, it's definitely a, a good time to do those uh type of things yeah and i'm planning to get that so i have a job in grad school so after i graduate undergrad i'm going to grad school so I'm planning on being a personal trainer while I go through grad school. And once oh. I get my uh, physical therapy degree, then I'll have all that experience being a personal trainer. And I think it'll translate into physical therapy. Yeah. So what inspired you to um, pursue that pathway? Because I know for everyone it's different. Either they have their own injury and they want to go into that, or they've seen someone else, or they've seen that field and shadowed it, or maybe they kind of grew up around it, or um, they just found it by surprise. Yeah, so my dad is a chiropractor, so that's, it lines up a little bit with physical therapy, and then my mom is, like, a therapist, so it's kind of funny, because, like, physical therapist is kind of both of those professions put together, Yeah. and I've just grown up loving fitness and everything, and in high school, I actually injured my PCL, Yeah. so I actually ruptured the whole PCL on my knee, so I had to go to physical therapy for a few weeks for that, and I kind of just fell in love with it, so I want to help, like, athletes get back on the field from injuries yeah definitely and i think you'd be the perfect person to be doing that and it's like you have yeah. experience you have years of uh being there in the field being in the gym being among other athletes also um how about the aspect of um being around other people so if we're talking to other younger people either that or people who are in um maybe not so good a space how do you find other positive people or people with this um 
with a similar mindset to help you. I know you've probably experienced that where you're bouncing ideas off each other, that energy that you will have with someone that's, um, I guess, in the same room as you, or maybe you guys are doing the same activity. It could be lifting or training or reading or going through mm-hmm. class. And, and you definitely feel that spark or that, um, that energy there. So what would you recommend for other, uh, other people to, to find that? Yeah, I think it's important to like, don't be too quick to assume like that somebody is like a good influence or something like that. You, like you really have to get to know them for a while. Like with you, for example, like at first I didn't really know you as well. And then once we started like talking and everything, working out together, I yeah. think this guy's actually really like driven and stuff like that. So he'd be a good friend to have. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's good to have like your own circle with driven people. Like either if they're entrepreneurs or they're just like have that drive to succeed in life. So I think it's important to have that inner circle and like, you don't all have to be on the same page, like doing the same thing. Like you can be diversified in your, in your professions and like you can help each other out throughout life. Yeah. 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 Those are some wise words there, Mark Hogan. Wow, (laughs) Wow, man. I think we got to write that down. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's definitely um, something important for people to consider, especially during this time of social media, you know, people putting out different things. Um, I guess, similar to what you said, maybe saying something that they don't actually follow through with in their actions. Yeah. Um, Maybe um, you want to talk about an experience of where you found a group of people or you have someone that has actually helped you and helped them in a way it could be recent it could be years ago or yeah it's just just for people to get an idea of what that looks like you know for people who have have been in those type of relations or for friend groups before right so i guess i can relate it to school like I had a friend that was really good at math and I wasn't really excelling in math. Yeah. And like, he was like really good at math. So I kind of just befriended him to like help me up with math homework growing up. And then I helped him a little bit with like fitness and stuff because he wasn't like in the best shape, I guess. So we kind of just helped each other out in that regard. Like I helped him out with fitness. He helped me out with math. And we we're both like driven people, but we're driven with different like mindsets. So I guess that's a pretty good example for that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I think I, I think um moments like that and experiences like that de- definitely help you kind of appreciate um seeing other people's views and also your own too, seeing both of you guys grow back and forth. Um I, I think that provides for uh, either a pretty good relation or friendship. And that's something that people could probably um take take note of, especially especially from yeah. hearing from you. Um yeah and um probably also um just to kind of finish up here um what is your definition of success mark right now what would that be success to me is setting goals and achieving them no matter how far the goal is from like where you're trying to get to so i think it's achieving your own goals no matter how big they are yeah yeah definitely and I think that fits perfectly with your uh, your quote here that we have on the on the right. IG post. Yeah, about um, pursuing goals and then seeing how it um, is definitely not addicting, but it feels good to pursue them. And then they keep compounding. I guess that word compounding it keeps going up and up yep. and up and up. Exactly. And, or or I guess other people might say it opens a lot of more doors for you. Um, do you want to talk about that maybe um i guess maybe one instance where you did something pretty cool or pretty noteworthy and yeah having one opportunity that leads into another or even more yeah i think uh going to college like going somewhere that i don't really know anybody like going from alaska to chicago all i knew was a football coach so mm-hmm. having that goal to go to college and i went to college uh started playing football there and i started meeting like a lot of cool people so I think that kind of opened up doors like in other places like I got a job on campus as a intramural intramural coordinator wow so that was a really good like leadership role that I got there and uh yeah just meeting all kinds of people and seeing all the opportunities open 
Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty good, especially exploring other areas or maybe doing something that you maybe you're not comfortable with. Or yeah, j- just like you said, putting yourself in um, I guess positions where you don't know many people, and then kind of um, I guess I guess you could say forcing yourself to do something, and then you find maybe one door, two door, three door opening, and then you, eventually you know more people. And that yeah, yeah. Makes- putting yourself outside of your comfort zone, I think, is really important for growth and succeeding in life. Yeah. So yeah, going to college, not knowing anybody, that's definitely outside of most people's comfort zones, not knowing. And then the months start comp like coming and going, and then like you start knowing, become more comfortable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and that aspect, and that um, I guess uh, just a position between comfort and then putting yourself in um vulnerable positions, maybe um during a game or during I guess you could say actual training because you're because right before you go in, you know what you're getting yourself uh, into, right? You know it's going to be a hard right. game, either that or it's going to be a hard workout session. You feel normal, relaxed, but then during the actual um, activity, your lungs are going to be burning, your muscles are going to be firing up, and the pump is going to be there. That difference. Oh, yeah that difference between either making something go through or just collapsing on yourself. Um, or I guess you could say when people kind of just give out or maybe their muscles give out, there's a big difference there. Um, do you want to describe that feeling of, uh, of what it feels like to you to go into a good lifting session, either that or into a football game? Yeah, I think there's a good um, like boundary between pushing your comfort zone and like, actually going too far, pushing yourself too far. So, like, in a football game, it's good to, like, be, like, really stressed. Like, not really stressed, but, like, have that adrenaline rush, like, before the game. And then during the game, you still have the adrenaline rush, so you don't, like, feel a lot of pain. And then after the game, you feel feel it all, (laughs) like, from all the hits and stuff. And in, like, a workout session, you got to have that mindset of, like, pushing yourself past like your breaking point like if you can do 10 reps you got to get like that 11th rep to like force growth and really like progress yeah yeah for sure and during those moments in between um i know for a lot of athletes and for a lot of people that kind of go through these uh moments there's i think maybe those pauses or there's sometimes there's stuff that you think about or like moments that you kind of flash back to maybe it's during a game like where where you're put on the line, either that or it's um, a PR you're about to go for. Right. Maybe maybe not so much a PR, but um, I guess moments in a game or a state where everything is um, tense, right? Yeah, I think, like, when you're in that situation, you just got to find, like, your why, I guess, like, why you're doing what you're doing. Like, if you're in a state of, like, if you're really tired, like, at the end of the fourth quarter, like, you got to find, like, something that makes you like kind of angry to like keep you going (laughs) yeah so like for me it's like when I was growing up my parents kind of fought a lot so I kind of have that inner drive to like I have that like anger inside to like keep pushing yeah yeah well like when you like you're going for that final rep you got to find something that really like makes you a little bit angry so you like get that extra rep yeah yeah for sure and I think we all have our own um either thoughts or ideas of, of what that is it's, it's different for everyone but i think that's right. something that we all share you know something that we have uh something to relate to amongst other athletes or other people as well definitely um yeah and so finding your why like a lot of people have different whys as well like it might be because of like a family member who passed away or something like you're doing it for them like that's why you're doing what you're doing or maybe like you got like made fun of in high school or something like that or you got bullied so like you got to find that like why like what like what you're doing it for yeah definitely yeah and um i i guess i was about to kind of kind of go on to for those of us who have done it, I think it gives us a lot of, um, I guess, motivation in the moment and also just keeping through with something. But how about for those people, I guess, who are kind of maybe neutral in that area? 
what do you think helps someone find that why or get to know themselves a little bit better? Yeah, I think they really need to like dig deep and like find out like what motivates them. Like if accomplishing goals motivates them, then try to accomplish like a small goal and then work from there. Or if like motivation comes from somewhere else, like a friend, like motivating you, like you have like an accountability partner to like motivate you to reach your goals. Or like what I said before, like if something aggravate, aggravates you or like something happened in the past that motivates you, like you just got to find like your motivation source, I guess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and I think that definitely, um, I think that helps a lot. Yeah. All right. Well, um, all right, Mark, I think that's about everything. I think we covered from the beginning towards the end. And I think um, as, as uh, this podcast increases to um, grow and include more people, I think we'll probably find another series, probably um, either men- something either in mentality or athletes going through um, um, certain moments. I think we'll definitely have you back on again. Right. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, definitely. Well, all right, guys. Thank you. This is uh, wrapping it up here with uh, Mark Hogan on the Age of Success podcast. And this is uh, Michael Martinez. Thank you guys for listening and definitely subscribe, like, and go follow.